Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, this is going to be a quick video on doing a SIP trunk um, for an inbound call. I'll make a separate video for outbound calls. Um, this is a SIP trunk that you would get with a provider of several types. I mean, there are several different ways to implement SIP, and it usually depends on your carrier, what you're going to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I, I have a simulated ITSP out there in the cloud. Um, I have some test numbers set up. I'm going to make some inbound calls, and I'm going to work those calls into Call Manager to ring on our x -Lite telephone. So um, the first thing I want to do is I want to get a SIP trunk built in Call Manager. So this is my SIP trunk. Well, this is where I'm going to build a trunk, and probably we don't have anything selected. So the first thing I want to do is get that going. Um, so let's check our interfaces to that one that's the voice that is my voice network so let's get that trunk built and let's just call this DC sip trunk description sip trunk to cloud device pool Washington DC media this software hub non Mm, blah 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 significant bit digits where we will accept all call and search space let's put that in the phone CSS and let's add an IP address 182.168.2.1 what is the gateway IP address oh sit jump profile let's get that done let's get that added get our sip trunk done hit reset the trunk and that should take care of us for getting our call in, in, inside the uh, system. So now the next thing that we want to do is we want to get the trunk up on our gateway. So let's just place a inbound call into the system. Let's see what happens. So show debugging. So that's on. So let's turn off our debugging. And you know, I had this a Shaka City Gateway 1. Uh, I just looked up some random names, Washington, D.C., um, and there's several of them. And I just decided to choose Chicago City. Um, so anyway, let's make a quick test call. Let's dial in and see what happens. All right, we get our fast busy, and let's do a debug. Let's see, sip calls, and let's see if a call comes in. So our call comes in, we see that it's G711. We see that this is the call number, this is the calling number. These numbers are completely fictitious. Um, they may belong to somebody, maybe, maybe not. So let's see what dial pairs that we hitting if those numbers come in. So we got that going. Let's check that dial pairs out. And the thing will slow down. We're hitting dial pair zero. All right, so you already know things are not looking too good when we start off. Let's see what other information we can find in there outside of dial pair zero. All right. Um, we have no outbound dial pair. We have caller ID. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get an inbound dial pair going. So let's get a dial pair that we can just grab all the calls on. And I'm not going to go over the basics of setting up dial pairs. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to go over them. So dial pair voice 2. And I usually do like 1 to 100 with... Um, inbound and then two, 101 to 200 for outbound, 300 for anything special. That usually, usually should be enough. Sometimes I start about 1,000 to 2,000 for inbound and 2,000 to 3,000 for outbound. That's usually more than enough. So anyway, in this case, one is already taken for actual PRI. So I'm going to use two for the VoIP uh, traffic that comes in. So I'm going to do incoming card number dot and then what's different about this is session protocol sip v2 
and let's make the codec G711 get plenty of bandwidth and no VAD but now we got 15 iOS not really that big of a deal and let's do let's get let's do some DTML uh, voice class I think that's it yeah and then we can do DTMF. Oh, let's zip. A being voice by zip. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Zip DTMF relay. Force. I could type that in, but it's not in the actual code yet, which is weird. But nonetheless, let's save that and let's see if we hit something on the inbound call. Call comes in, hits my dial up here. Um, I don't have an outbound dial pair, VoIP dial pair to the call manager, but I do have an actual dial pair. So now the next phase, we can do this two different ways. We can send 10 digits to the call manager and let the call manager strip it down to four, or we can strip it down to four on the gateway and send four to call manager and let call manager deal with that. Uh, now this kind of depends on your deployment in the smaller deployments. What you want to do is probably strip it down to four. It makes SRST a little bit easier. And things usually flow well with only one gateway. If you're gonna if this is gonna be at a data center or any other site that you're gonna be taking in a lot of SIP connections from all of your other sites, it may be in your best interest to send 10 digits to the call manager to avoid overlaps. And you should also look into an E164 dial plan or a plus C164 dial plan or whatever they're calling it um, to make this go easier. But I'm going to leave that for another discussion. So since this is a single site, I'm going to strip it down to four on the gateway and send four characters to call manager. So let's get that done. So let's make a new translation rule, voice translation rule, 100, rule 1. And if you don't know voice translation rules, I'll probably go over these in another video. 202 is the DC area code, 555 is generic. And next thing we want to do is we want to create a set. I think that's what they call it. And what this set allows us to do is allows us to get any and everything with this dot star that comes in. And that's what we want. And we want to be able to use that for all the things, and that's the actual set one right there. And what we want is 202, 555, and any other characters with this says right here. Well, this says right here. Any characters that come in, we want those to be placed into set one, and we want that to be replaced right here with set one. And this is just a setup for it. I wish I could explain it, but I'm trying to move fast. I don't want this video to be too long. We're already at eight minutes. So, um, that's done and let's hurry up and X out of this and test voice. Let's test it out. Let's verify translation rule 100, 202, 555, Bam. All right. We see that cuts it down. That's exactly what we want. Now let's make a tra voice translation profile profile. Let's call this inbound. Translate the call or the calling number. The called number is what we're going to do. The calling number would be the caller ID. So we want to do translate called 100. The next thing I want to actually do so when that call comes in, it will strip that call down to four different four characters so let's go to voice translation oops let's go to dial peer voice 2 
and let's go to translation profile incoming and let's add that there all right so we do need an outbound dial pair to call manager so show dial Here, voice for a thousand VoIP um, destination some other things I'm working on. So let's do anything one or eight dot dot dot. That's three dots. So four characters. Session protocol. We're sending a SIP. And the session target is your call manager, IPv4, 2168.2.20. We'll be fine without a pub for right now. And the codec will be G711 ULAW. So let's see what happens if we dial that number right now. I'm going to read dial. Actually, let's see what dial. Um, I'm going to check our dial pairs right now. see what happens all right already actually ringing already so it rings where it's supposed to ring so we did our inbound we did our outbound dial pairs so um, let's check it out again comes in hits dial pair 2 goes through our voice translation outbound dial period 1004 so it goes through call numbers 1004 outgoing dial pairs 4000 we just created and we have our call set up this is the calling rd call number this is the source this is the destination 5060 and everything looks good so let's actually send take that call up hook and see if anything bad happens so we're going to answer that call and um, let's see if I hear any audio and um, no audio uh, do have audio well allowed nonetheless let's drop that call so we see that we were able to make a call Go across the system. Um, we set the zip trunk. We did a zip trunk from the call manager to the gateway, and we also did a we did dial pairs on the gateway. Voice translation was on the gateway. Unfortunately, most zip trunks in production um, there are going to be a lot of gotchas that you have to look out for. Um, as an example, um, in my setup, I, I just did it straight to where I knew the zip trunk binding would come. Most of the time, you're going to have to do it to your loop back, and your binding can be off. And I'm just going to do that as a quick example for you right now. I'm going to bind this to my loop back, and now I'm going to send a call again. And more than likely, we're not going to accept the call. And this is a best practice right here. So I'm going to send the call again, and I'm getting my fast busy. And why am I getting a fast busy? Debug CSIP calls. I'm sending a call in. This is the source address. This is the destination address. This is the source 2.1 right here to this destination right here. The call manager does not know about this address because this address is not listed in the SIP trunk down at the bottom and by default it will reject the call then the best practice it is in your best interest to use the loop back so what you would want to do if you're in one of those situations is that you would want to go into your dial pair because you could have a different for inbound and outbound a different interface 
So it's best to put it on interface. And what you would do is voice class set bind the media, the source interface loop back for bind control source interface loop back for make that call again. And bam, your call goes right across and you can answer it. Uh, hopefully this was informative for you guys. I know I can get kind of wordy. This is my first videos. I plan on doing quite a few videos. My next video will be outbound on the SIP trunk. Um, and then I'll start getting into other little gotchas that I see. Um, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond and get back to you. Thank you.